Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, have you ever noticed how anytime bad stuff happens that most, a lot of people seem like they're universalists, like, you know, God didn't have anything to do with that, or, you know, when it's God, especially like the thing with the tornadoes, you know, the Bible teaches us that God visits the wicked with a whirlwind. He comes down upon the head of the wicked with a whirlwind, and you know, when a tornado goes through a town, whether it's Joplin, Missouri, or Oklahoma City, or uh, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, or any any town at all, you know, there's people in that town that are wicked. There just is. And it doesn't mean everybody that's affected by the tornado or that dies is wicked, but it just, it they are. And we're going to see judgments happening in America and around the world that are going to pale, make, make Joplin look like a picnic, okay? going to make Tuscaloosa look, look tame, alright, these things are going to be happening in rapid succession, all might look calm now, but in the future, in the near future, we're going to see cataclysms taking place where hundreds of thousands of people are going to be dead, you see, because God is judging, God is a righteous God, a holy God, His love demands judgment, He says in His word, He loves judgment. And not everyone is going to heaven, okay? The people that reject God are not going to heaven. The people that shake their fist in God's face are not going to heaven. And the Christians who profess with their mouth, but their heart is far from it, okay? They profess with their mouth that they love God, but their heart is far from God. Their heart is far from God because they don't do what the Bible says. They don't forgive their brother or their sister or their mother or their father or their aunt, or their uncle, or their teacher, or their boss, or their co-worker. They hold grudges. And the Bible says, if we don't forgive men their trespasses, neither will our Father in Heaven forgive us our trespasses. That's just what it says. How do we think, if, if, you're, if you're holding a grudge against somebody, how do you think you're going to make it in? You think Jesus is just going to forgive you? When He said in His Word, He will not? If we don't forgive everyone from our heart, their trespass against us, we have to forgive. We have to walk in forgiveness daily. There's no such thing as universalism where everybody makes it in, even the devil gets redeemed and all this. That's a, that's a lie from hell. That's new age. That's not going to happen. And, it, and also gossipers. God says He hates a talebearer. People who go around gossiping behind others' backs. God hates that. And people that are gossipers, if you're a gossiper, God sees that and he, you're going to reap what you're sowing. You're going to reap it. You're going to be found out to be a gossiper. A talebearer. One who slanders his neighbor or believes a lie about his neighbor. You, you can't do that. You just can't. you got to stop it. you got to repent. You know, we have to... We have to keep our focus on the Lord every day, every minute of every day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, the, you know the, the Lord is faithful to bring us every day back to the cross. He makes us soldiers of the cross. And let me go over here. I'm going to open up this e-sword here. And in 2 Timothy chapter 2, Paul is speaking to the church. He's speaking to young Timothy, and he's speaking to us. And he, and he says... He, it says here, and I'm going to read this because you need to understand, all of us need to take this to heart. All of us need to remember the Holy Scripture. Remember the Word of the Lord spoken through the Holy Spirit, okay, to His church, all right? Paul says here, verse 1, 2 Timothy 2, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Now, I receive that. I receive that. Paul speaking that to me. The Holy Ghost is talking to me personally. And He's speaking to you personally. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. See, there's grace in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Hallelujah. 
Thou therefore endure. You have to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. See, are you a good soldier today? Are we good soldiers today? Enduring enduring hardness. I'm going to look that word hardness up. And it means to undergo hardship, be afflicted, endure affliction, hardness, suffer trouble. Are we good soldiers? I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes we are not good soldiers. We do not endure the hardness, okay? Sometimes we complain about the hardness. And we can confess with our mouth. Once again, here we go, right back to the heart again. See? Let's be honest as believers. With our heart. God sees our heart. Our lips can say all day long, Oh Lord, I thank you for this. Oh Lord, you're so wonderful. I bless you, Lord. I bless you this. I bless you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. But our heart can be far from that. Our heart can be saying, Oh God, I hate this. I hate this. You see? Have you ever been there? And if you're honest, you'll say, Yes, I have been there. And God wants to cut that out of us. God wants us to rejoice and count all things joy. Hallelujah. See? But it's something we learn every day. We endure hardness as good soldiers of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Are you chosen today to be a soldier? A soldier does not do what he wants to do. A soldier does what his commanding officer tells him to do. Do you understand? Do you hear me? A good soldier does what the commanding officer says to do. What his sergeant tells him to do. And a good captain says does what his major tells him to do. And a good major does what the colonel says. And a good colonel does what the general says. Do you understand? And the captain of the host is the Lord Jesus Christ. And we follow Him. And He has order in His body. He is the head. The Holy Spirit. The Spirit of Christ in us. speaks to us and tells us to do certain things and we must be obedient and do them. Even if it's going to cost us everything. Even if He shows us this is going to cost you everything, we have to be obedient. I remember my dear wife, when the Lord told her, He came to her and asked her, are you willing to be separated from your children, from your own children, for my name's sake? And she prayed about it. She prayed. And she told the Lord, Yes, Lord, I'm willing. I'm willing, Lord. And the very next day, God brought it to pass with one of her daughters. And then a little later on, her other daughter. Then her son later on. But she's a good soldier. And now she's beginning to see the fruit of her waiting on the Lord. And not trying to make things happen herself, but waiting on the Lord. And the Lord is saving her children. Why? Because He said He would. See, When God says something that He's going to do, He does it. But in this battle we are in, we are facing battle after battle after battle. God can bring us through one battle where we're waiting for Him for deliverance in a certain area in our life, whether it's financial or spiritual or in the physical healing of the body, whatever kind of hardship or trial He's bringing a believer through. He lets us go through these to prepare us for the next trial and to help the fellow believers who are going through various trials themselves. See? And the Lord showed us every trial is a preparation for the next one, for the next one, for the next one. He counts us as trees of righteousness. The trees that you see out in the world today growing out of the ground, they're exposed to all the elements. And the wind buffets them, and the rains fall, and the hail falls, and, and these trees 
okay? They are turned every way, see? And as they're turned, their roots go down deeper, deeper. And they get stronger and stronger. Hallelujah. And that's what God wants us to do. See? That's what He wants us to do. We must remember that we are chosen to be good soldiers. Not soldiers that shrink back in fear, but soldiers that go forward in the mighty name of Jesus and by His holy precious blood. See, all life is contained in the precious blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All life. It, it, it is not in any other avenue. You don't get it any other way except through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit comes to us via the blood. Hallelujah. See, because His blood was poured forth, He gave forth His life blood. Hallelujah. Therefore, because He died on the cross and rose again from the dead and took His place at the right hand of the Father, He ascended into heaven. Then He sent forth His Spirit, see? The Spirit that, that dwells in us crying out, Abba, Abba, Father, Father. This church in America is fixing to get its comeuppance. Okay? It's recompense. Now, I, I've been doing some thinking lately. <clears throat> One time I heard uh, a Barnum poll that said there were like 65 million professing evangelical Christians in America. 65 million. Okay? That's like the population of L.A., Chicago, New York City, Houston, Dallas, you know, maybe throw a few more big cities in there to get up to 65 million people. That many people profess with their mouth that they are born again and filled with the Holy Spirit of God in America. And how many homeless are there in America? Two or three million? And Jesus said to go out and get the homeless and bring them to your house. See? So I say to you, if the Christian church were doing what Jesus Christ has commanded us to do, there wouldn't be any people homeless out in the world. Do you see? We all have to do soul searching every day and say, Lord, am I doing, am I living up to your commands, to what you have told us to do? We must be obedient to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 A lot of people don't bring the homeless to their house because they're afraid. They have fear. They think the homeless are going to rip them off. But, but, they're, but they don't even think about the Lord Jesus Christ that that could be Jesus Christ. That could be Jesus right there. Coming to them in the form of a homeless person. And they turn away Jesus. And I know one time, we, we picked this one homeless guy up two or three times and we brought him to our house and let him spend the night with us. And, and the next day he would just leave. And he was, he was an older man and he had white hair, the most beautiful blue eyes you ever saw. And he, he'd sleep on the couch and we just lived in a, a 20 foot by 12 foot building that we had built up on our land. We started building our house where we used to live in Oklahoma. And, uh, and so we would put a sheet across the room, you know. And he'd sleep on the couch, me and Sharon be in the bed, and we just all go to bed, you know, wake up in the morning and eat some breakfast and, and, and share the love of Jesus with this man. And then we'd take him back to the highway and he wanted to get back on the highway, you know. I mean, there's we've met a lot of homeless people that are so filled with the fire and the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. Because everybody equates holiness and, and, and being with Jesus and being blessed with having a lot of money. And that's not necessarily holiness at all, period. God blesses people with finances. God blesses people with material goods, yes. But what for? For their flesh? For their self? No. It's for others, mainly. It's for others. And now He's doing things in the church and He's bringing that back. He's coming back full circle and He's going to show the church. I didn't give you all this for you. I gave it to you for everyone, see? For my body, to help my body. Because with the things coming, everyone, you look at Joplin, 
That whole neighborhood was wiped out. The whole thing, there was nothing left. And people were pulling together, helping each other. Why weren't they doing that before? How many people in that neighborhood who couldn't make their house payments? How many people in there who were losing everything? I'd like to know. And how many of their neighbors came to help them? But then, when there's a great big tornado come through, Everybody's pulling together, see? The community comes together. Maybe that's why God sent it, huh? To get people focused on other people. Others, others, others. That's why God came. That's why God came in the form of a man. Because He was focused on us. And He loved us. But you look at it. Look what it takes for God's people who profess the name of Jesus to reach out and help one another. In a real, tangible way. It takes a great big tornado, a great big whirlwind to come through. Why do we have to wait for that? Let's don't wait for that, church. Let's don't wait for that. Let's seek out those God would lead us to in our own area. Where we are to help. Because He'll bring them to you. He'll, bring, he'll lead them to you. If you're open, if you cry out and say, Lord Jesus, give me a, a divine appointment with someone today, Lord, that you want me to help. You want me to minister to them in whatever way, Lord, that I'm able. And I'm going to pray that right now. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, I lift this up to you, Lord, this need for your body, Lord, the body of Christ, Lord. We need to be obedient to your word, Lord, as a body. No one is above anyone in the body of Christ, Lord. We are all side by side submitting ourselves one to another in the fear of God. Hallelujah. In the fear of you, Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Father, I pray right now that, that you would bring people to us that we could help, Lord. That you want us to help in any way that we are able, whether it's financial, spiritual, with food, with shelter, with clothing, with a ride to the store, whatever it is, Lord. Heavenly Father, give us your wisdom and discernment to, to, to see what you are doing and what you are saying, Lord. Help us to be obedient to you, Lord. Forgive us for all the times, Lord, we've turned people away because we just didn't want to take the time to help them, Lord. Forgive us for the times, Lord, that we have lied to people in our lives, Lord, telling them we didn't have any way to help them when we did. Forgive your church, Lord. For your church has done wickedly, Lord, in focusing upon itself. Focusing upon its self. Wicked, vile self. Have mercy, Father, and pour forth your Holy Spirit upon your bride. And bring your bride to repentance, Lord. Even this night, in Jesus' name. Amen.